Hey all, new day, new verse. We continue on into Isaiah. Today we're being picking up with chapter 54, verses 15 through 17. And Father God, thank you. Thank you that you are with us. Thank you that we need not fear. Thank you that you are our Father in heaven. That your name is holy. We ask that your kingdom come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, this day give us our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. Lead the lay, O Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. To you, Jesus, we pray. Verse 15. If any nation comes to fight you, it is not because I sent them. Whoever attacks you will go down in defeat. I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge and makes the weapons of destruction. And I have created the armies that destroy. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. Though these benefits are enjoyed by the servants of Yahweh. Their vindication will come from me. I, Yahweh, have spoken. I, I really just, I want to dig into, because there's so much beauty here, right? You, you've got the... From Isaiah's day of the future view of the second temple being built, right? Cause, mm, but also the fact that the image of the blacksmith there, right? Because the blacksmith is an image from for Persia. See uh, Daniel, Jeremiah, a couple other places. You know, it speaks there. And so I really love that, you know, right back there, it's a reminder. No, no, no. To make sure that Jerusalem is rebuilt for the day it comes crashing down. Yep, going to use Cyrus. But if there's going to be a future Jerusalem past that. And I love how it's this this present past future tense all three of them simultaneously because isaiah has a present in the temple of trusting and knowing that he is in the arms of the lord the people and looking forward to the day of the vindication the blacksmith the promise because you know, babylon's coming and god's still going to fix that and then even farther into seeing oh this is to jerusalem who's being told the inhabitants of that make up this city are those who trust of the lord those who seek his face those who are his servants and when going through it's like okay well what are who, who are his servants and it's not just you know the prophets obviously here but it goes deeper it's it's and it's not just you know upper caste echelon kind of thing it's religious thinking it, it's anyone who truly seeks to be his 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 emissary a anyone who seeks to belong to him in intimate relationship that this isn't just piety oh i'm just going to talk to an invisible voice. no this is intimacy there's a reason that the or the prayer starts on our Father in heaven, to understand that He is above it all, that He knows all, sees all, cannot have the wool pulled over His eyes. Just and true and pure and merciful, the I am that I am, who is the source of all things. Which means if you love movies, guess what? Where do you think you get it from? If you love making things, guess what? Where do you think you got it from? That muchness you have is his gift to you, and he wants to play. That's why he gave it. Like any parent likes to play with their children. Like, let's go do something. Let's go play with the Legos. Oh, you want to do this instead? Let's go do that. Let's look at this beautiful world around us with awe and wonder and the wild bewilderment of beauty that it is instead of the nightmare storm that we have decided to create it into by hell being our own choice of all the stories of oh you can steal that and rub this or take that if it's really that important to you is, it, is it your soul really worth that cost is the damage to everyone and everything around you including yourself really worth it because i promise you if you think about it it won't be and it's not People who are the servants of the Lord are the one, the Lord, who are the ones who seek Him. You know, what was it? seek me and live. I think from Habakkuk uh, or Amos <clears throat> to live justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Mercy, not sacrifice. That's why this is wisdom literature. Why it's something that points out why and how we're broken that's something that fixes he does that 
The Lord does that. That's why the intimate relationship is intimate and organic. When we read this, it reads us and points out where we need the help. So that we can actually remember that humane is derived from what we are, not the other way around. So that it will be back to being shocking and appalling to see people who traffic in death, violence, of every kind. Abuse. Because that is what it is. It is trusting in something else. Someone else. It is going to anything other than the source. No wonder adultery and idolatry are so intimately connected. It's the very idea. <laughs> yep. It's your spouse. This is literally the rescuing A's or same word in Genesis as the Holy Spirit is used in other, pretty much every other place. Yep, this is yours. They're your spouse. You go to them. Oh, go around to somebody else. You need the same idea. He is the source of life itself. He is the I am that I am. That's why we say Yahweh. Because it's he will be. Only the Lord can say the I am that I am. Is the rest of us don't even know what we are, let alone who? It's what we spend our lives trying to figure out. And that's the worst thing we do to the next generation is telling them BS that, oh, it gets it. No, it can if we would lay off the BS and actually recognize there's no manual to this. Everyone is making it up as they go along because everybody's new day is new to them. Today is a day we have not experienced yet. Because yesterday is over and tomorrow is promised to no one. What do we do with this experience? We act agape, seeing others as, at bare minimum, as valuable as ourselves, if not more. Not to cast ourselves down, but to lift everyone up. Because if everyone is lifting everyone else up, guess what? Make the military crawl. You're getting up that building. Doesn't matter how tall it is. And you, why do you think that the ziggurat is so fascinating to me? Because when humanity works together, it can accomplish anything. Now imagine if we did that working toward his kingdom instead of our own. Working toward a place where muchness of everyone is celebrated instead of trafficking in humanity, in lives, and in suffering like it's currency, and backing it with more than the stuff in our pockets. You can't serve God and Mammon. You can't serve Yahweh, you can't serve Jesus. You cannot serve the source of all life and something else. You can't drink from another cistern. And those who are the servants of the Lord understand that. The servants of this new Jerusalem need not live in fear because the world is always going to act foolish until kingdom come. We don't have to. We get to live set apart and differently and it's all through his blood. Recognizing that he paid the debt we owe and he did it out of love. He did it because he knew we couldn't, and he wanted to instead, rather than see us suffer and squirm. And when we understand that level of forgiveness, when we grasp and grok that level of mercy, of course, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. We understand what we've been forgiven, and so we can't help but pay it forward because of what the Lord has done for us. That's what unites us. That's what brings us together. That's what 